Which is the OTT aggregation game. The OTT aggregation game is characterized by constant innovation, fierce competition and evolving consumer preferences. Success in the industry depends on a combination of factors including content libraries, pricing, user experience and strategic partnerships. As the industry continues to evolve, new entrants and disruptive technologies may further shape the landscape. So what are the key drivers behind the growth of OTT, that's over-the-top streaming platforms or industry in the recent years? To get the answers to all these questions, we have an elaborated session by all our esteemed dignitaries who are with us today. So without further ado, let me call upon stage firstly, Mr. Ravi Kant Sabnavis, CEO Arha Media and Broadcasting, to kindly take up the stage for the next session on the OTT aggregation game. Now, I uh, would like to take the honor to invite Mr. Yatin Gupta, Senior Vice President, GTPL Hathway Limited. Please welcome Mr. Gupta. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our next dignitary, our next esteemed speaker for the day, Mr. Akshat Singhal, Head Dangal Play. Please welcome Mr. Akshat. We have Mr. Amir Mulani, Founder and CEO, Playbox TV. May I have the honor of inviting Mr. Amir Mulani on stage? We have Ms. Archita Jasani, COO, V Hunt Digital Media, OTT Chana Jor. Please welcome the gorgeous lady out there, Ms. Archita Jasani. And along with all of them, would like to invite our session chair, of course, Mr. Anuj Gandhi, media consultant. Please welcome Mr. Anuj Gandhi. Good afternoon, everybody. We are running slightly late, but uh, I'll not hold much from your lunch timing. So we will make it crisp and exciting so that you are ready for your lunch. Thanks, Indian Television, for uh, uh, getting us all here uh, to do this interesting conversation on the... So you've seen uh, traditional guys in the session before. You've seen fast. Uh, it looks like everything is about aggregation only whether it is the cable DTH or it is fast, it looks like everybody wants to be watching everything in one platform. So all kinds of aggregation. So, so before we, I mean, I introduce uh, or ask my uh, things. One question to the audience here. Uh, on an average, and I will ask question, you can just raise hand, we will. How many hours people spend on their mobile phones every day, more than five hours. More than six hours, nobody. More than three hours, the people are lying here in this room. Yeah. Don't worry, nobody is judging you, right? Clearly people are lying. I don't think people who are in the business can spend less than three, four hours on mobile every day. Right? If I need to ask a second round of that question, how many hours in that, whatever you spend on your mobile screen, is actually watching OTT, right? S word OTT, more than two hours, more than 50%, oh, I can see some heads moving here, there. I think uh, what we are going to discuss today is what I would call as share of sight, right? How many hours can people watch content? It's a share of sight. Fast between YouTube, fast, OTT, linear channels, social media, WhatsApp, how many hours can be in? And hence the, the challenge that all of us have today on making sure that the, uh, I know Ashish talked about distribution being God, but I think ultimately everything is consumer. We decide what we want to watch, when we want to watch, where we want to watch, and subscribe to what we want. So we will, let's, that's the, that's the matter of debate that we will do today. So let's start with my broader question to, and uh, people here, we have people from, people who run OTT as SWOT services, people who aggregate OTT, and also people who are looking to aggregate combined with other services. So let's start with OTT first. There is a belief, and everybody says that aggregation is about two and a half. In fact, in the earlier session also, People said people subscribe to two and a half OTTs. But individual OTTs, there is a belief that beyond the point from a D2C perspective or direct to consumer, 
you cannot cross. There is a customer acquisition cost, there is other costs that build in. Is there, when you run an OTT, and this is to Ravi, Archita, and Akshat, is there that there is a problem that beyond this I can't grow, I need to look at other avenues to grow? Ravi? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I, I think uh, if I look at it from the consumer's perspective, uh, there's a lot of entertainment out there for me as a consumer, right? Be it a YouTube video or simply chatting with somebody on the phone. I'm probably oversimplifying to make the point, but you know that's also entertainment, right? Uh, and then there is OTT. Uh, so there is a limit to my time, even if it be five hours or three hours or six hours, finally there is a limit. Uh, and then in that time, I'm trying to watch OTTs as well, besides doing whatever I am for entertainment. Uh, so therefore, you're uh, possibly right that there comes a time when the growth, then when I look at it from our perspective and not the consumers, our growth slows down, right? We are going to find it increasingly difficult uh, to A, reach out to the consumer uh, and B, convince them to be subscribing uh, you know, to our platform, broadly speaking. Archita? Uh, just adding to uh, you know, what uh, Ravi Khan said, uh, of course, uh, you know, there is a stagnation which is happening, especially in metros, uh, where we see that uh, people, there is a capacity on how many apps can be there on a mobile phone. So either you are loyalist to two or three apps you know, in general. Uh, beyond that, I see a lot of growth that can uh, happen in tier 2 and tier 3 because these are the uh, consumers who are now tasting uh, you know, what the OTT and the entertainment segments are. So where we see that there is a glass ceiling uh, probably happening towards the metros, but there is a, a huge a potentiality in tier 2 and tier 3 markets that we can go through. Uh, also, with the aggregators, you know, probably they also control a lot of the consumer base uh, beyond where we reach. So, hence the aggregation makes sense in a way that uh, there is a D2C and there is a D B2B2C as well, and which helps us to uh, get to the last mile of the consumers. Uh, hi. So, earlier, people used to go to OTD platforms and search for content because the OTD platforms are very less. Now with so many OTT platforms, we need to go to the users and like if they have our, if they know okay, we have Dungle Play subscription, they'll just go on the platform, see what they have. So that's why like it's important now to get into bundles and yeah. So Amir, a uh, question to you. Let's say, let's do a little role play. One of the things that as an OTT aggregator that you would, when you go and meet a Ravi and saying let's, add your OTT to my aggregation. The first question that any OTT player will say, you know what, it will cannibalize my D2C business, right? I have this direct customer who's paying me whatever, my MRP, and tomorrow you will take it from me at a wholesale price, and I will lose my existing customer, right? What, what would be your response to, to Ravi? Hello, hello. So, uh, my response will be very simple, sir. So, for example, let's assume you're running a restaurant and you have a capacity of serving 100 customers, but uh, on average, you are able to serve around 60% of your seats and 40% is going just lying down. So, I come in picture and say, boss, that to add the additional 40 customers, I can be a great medium for you to sample your content also with a subscriber. Now, to get that 60 customer also, you have spent a huge amount of money on customer acquisition. So, there are people who spend to sell 1000 rupees subscription, there are people who are spending 3000 rupees of customer acquisition cost. But from a platform like me, you get a guaranteed subscriber. Obviously, there is a small subsidized value which you offer us and that is how we will be able to serve those 40 customers who didn't even knew. And the second advantage what uh, Playbox brings in is that Assume that you are uh, sitting in a northern market. For example, AHA is very popular in south, uh, or Hyderabad belt of it. But at the same time, the customer who is subscribing to, for example, Z5 in the north or a Sony in the north, but with a bundling offering, he also getting a small cut of that subscription, which adds more additional revenue to him. So I think it's a win-win situation for both of us. 
So, uh, Yatin, uh, that is actually an automatic thing for you, right? Tra traditionally, TV is always, actually we've never questioned if, you know, and a lot of people in this room have been in industry for decades, right? Nobody questioned aggregation as a concept uh, because it was guaranteed channel chahiye to cable chahiye ya DTH chahiye, right? Nobody said there was no company in media which was doing direct sale of a linear channel, correct? Everybody correct. had to go through a distribution platform as they would. This is a new phenomenon, right? Absolutely. There is OTT being sold by independent global players, by broadcasters, by independent OTT guys, and hence the aggregation. So from a traditional guy who's saying, I am doing my linear business, I am doing my aggregation, where mm -hmm. does OTT aggregation in your life fit in? Because you are anyway doing a linear business. I mean, good, bad, ugly, there is growth, there is no growth, but reality is it's a big business, right? How does OTT aggregation fit into your life? So the way that we will look at it, uh, we are looking at it rather, rather is, uh, we already have a cable product which is uh, an aggregation of channels. We have broadband as a service. Now to augment this along with OTT players uh, coming on to, uh, uh, coming on as, uh, as a bundled offer is what we would look at as an op option for the consumers. So basically looking at the consumer and saying that from this household, He's already got a cable, he's already got a broadband. We may be able to give him OTT services as an aggregation. We may be able to give him other services as an aggregation model. Whether it makes economic sense or not, of course, is a, uh, is a big question mark because uh, the OTT players are, are obviously expecting certain amount of uh, guarantees, which may or may not work out. So we're, we're looking at all of that while deciding whether to go ahead with it or, and, and what are the model. So you think there is an opportunity that one year from today, I will get a, an offer from a traditional, like you, a traditional TV player saying, take internet, cable, and all OTTs at a certain monthly rate. Absolutely. Why is it not, why is it, it seems only MGs is the problem, but other than that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, see, uh, today the, the situation is slightly more complicated than what it was earlier. Uh, because of the NTO in the cable space, there has been an increase in prices of the, of the broadcast channel itself. And right now, what we were, let's say pre-NTO, we were at a differential price with DTH because DTH was on a digital model. We were on a cable model which was uh, bulk buying. And we were able to offer services at a reasonable price to the consumer, which was obviously at a much, uh, much larger differential than the, D than the DTH players could. Uh, so that's, that's become one of the issues. Now we are at a situation where we have to offer it at a similar price. It may not be drastically different. The other part that is there is the broadband business where there is obviously a huge amount of competition that has come in and price points are uh, continuously going down. Now in this situation, if we are to offer aggregation of OTT players, it has to be at a sensible cost. Otherwise, we will not be competitive. We have to compete with the likes of the telcos and uh, the, uh, the national uh, players uh, who are offering fiber, OTT, linear channels, everything put together. So we have to be price competitive and we also have to look at our margins. So let's actually focus on only, if I'm a consumer today and I ask these questions to everybody, you know, question in the beginning, let's talk only what makes sense from a consumer. If I'm a consumer today, I am actually not interested so much in it, traditional TV, if you see, if everybody remembers the EPG, right, the movie channels were all stacked next to each other. There was a reason because I never watched a, a Z Cinema or a Sony Max, I am watching the movie. So I go from one channel to the other and saying, okay, this is the movie I like. They're all stacked next to each other, much easier to make the choice. Today, as a consumer, I am, actually Ashish has left, he just told me, some data point that just in Hindi GECs, we are producing 165,000 hours of content. Just in Hindi channels, or not Hindi, sorry, GEC channels, right, across the country. Then if I add all the OTT content that is being made, uh, and I am not going to YouTube, right, 
there is so much content today for the consumer. How does an OTT aggregation today, and Amit to you and then I will go to at least all OTT, how does it make a difference to you? How, what is the proposition that you have for me as a consumer today and how does it benefit consumer and OTT? So, uh, the proposition is very simple. I think uh, we all are in the process of learning and when we started, the proposition was different. The consumer was thinking differently. But today, uh, so right, if you see today, India has almost more than 80 to 90 plus OTTs. Uh, some are branded, some are non-branded stuff. And it is very difficult to subscribe each one of them. And as you rightly said, it is a content game. So for example, if I want to watch a Shark Tank, so I will definitely go to, and I will find a platform. So the responsibility of an OTT aggregator here is that uh, trying to personalize the product as per the consumer needs. So for example, what kind of content this kind of consumer likes it. Okay, for the consumer, is very simple. He doesn't want to watch 20 OTTs. We, we ourselves bundle 20 plus OTTs with different, different broadband plans, but it doesn't make sense to the consumer. But it makes sense to the operator because he wants to show that the large amount of offering I'm giving it to the consumer at a very affordable price. I think Yatin will relate to that thought. Uh, as he said, the, there's a lot of competition in the broadband market. But for the consumer, it is purely content. So, if you see, even today, I'll tell you some data metrics on from our platform. Uh, we try to put almost 10 titles on our app from different, different OTT platforms. And out of 10, we have seen the click per ratio is 3. He will definitely go and try to access the detail page of it, and he will come back. And coincidentally, he will choose one. And 90% of times, consumer know what he wants to watch. He will come, search, click the movie, and just start watching it. So I think my responsibility as a platform or an, as an aggregator, it is purely give him something which he really wants to and trying to keep it so easy so that it's not confusing for him to decide. So does that, Ravi, Archita uh, and Akshat, does that make sense? Because you, when the consumer is directly subscribing to you, you pretty much own the consumer from day zero, right? Yes. Now, there is an OTT aggregation uh, ecosystem that is building, I would still say, it is in its infancy. It's just started a couple of years back, right? So does that make sense to you? And how do you take benefit of that kind of a... Because consumer is not... If I'm, if I'm at, in, in uh, Hyderabad, and I am, as a consumer today, is wanting to watch something from Gemini and from ETV and AHA, right? So I don't care where it is from. If you promote and I see a hoarding, I'm saying, okay, this is what I like. I like to watch, I don't care. So how does an OTT aggregation, Ravi, to you first and then? So uh, I'll probably pick up from what you just said that, uh, you know, there is AHA, there's Z5, there's probably Gemini and so on and so forth. So let's pause here for a moment and uh, just sort of step back. So as an OTT platform, as an entertainment platform, one of, uh, besides coming up with good content, I would like to have my product within an arm's length of desire. That's where aggregators come in. For a moment, let's keep economics and commerce out of it. Uh, for a moment, let's even keep owning the customer out of it. Right? I want to get everywhere. As I was telling you before this, it's akin to FMCG. You go you know, to a Kirana shop, a multi-brand outlet, essentially. What it does for us is to be able to put out your product there. Uh, of course, there's tons of choice. So I think that's where, to, to come back to your question, this makes a lot of sense for us uh, because through your own platform, upside, you own the consumer, there's much more insights, and you, know, you can sort of put out content, you can manage churn, and so on and so forth. On the other hand, what aggregators give us uh, is that reach, which is going to be difficult otherwise. And that, that's why I see synergies. So content discovery is uh, is a challenge we all know. Uh, secondly, when we say consumers, uh, consumer is not one because there are different sets of consumer. There is one set of consumer who knows what to watch. He comes there, he searches, he watches. There is another set of consumer who doesn't know what he wants to watch. So he comes there, he experiments the content, he sees what's coming new, and then there are different age and genders of uh, consumers, right? So Gen Z doesn't want to see uh, what's available, but they want to see what's new. And hence, 
why there is a rush to Korean series, Turkish dramas, all of that. People don't know what this content is, right? And people still want to watch it. Dubbing has started now, but people did watch it in Korean language itself, reading the subtitling. So I think, uh, you know, there are two sets of consumers here. And um, probably we all are somewhere also catering to consumers who want to experiment and see something new. Secondly, when I come to the OTT aggregators and how they help us is, uh, you know, reaching out to this consumer saying what's coming new on these platforms. Because when we go to this, uh, go to all the aggregators and ask for promotions or we try to plan the promotions, it's always that, is it new? What's new? Okay, legacy content, they are engaged engaging, but they are not really an acquisition model in today's date. So probably where these promotions, uh, they help us in promoting, they help us in getting to the last mile of the consumer. And that's where, uh, you know, it's a win-win for both of uh, the teams. I think the OTT partners as well, the aggregators, because they also want to give consumers every day something new to engage, to subscribe, to keep being loyal to a platform. So yeah. I mean, it's great for users because they can't switch on 20 different apps and like, check which content they want. So aggregator apps are doing great work that way is to recommend content of what they like, right? And which platform they can see. But for us, great, as they both said, like we get more organic users. And once they are on our platform, it's our responsibility uh, to make them at least watch something to get some watch time out of them and the retention and everything, then it's our responsibility. So they're helping us to get organic users to our platform, yeah. So, I mean, something that Ravi said, and I, that's been, uh, ownership of the consumer, right? When he's watching from your app, it's very easy when you do, but when OTT aggregation, it's all deep linked and the movement. But the bigger question there is churn. See, uh, I think Yatin mentioned, right? Before NTO, there was a certain life. There was no churn in cable, right? Everybody was getting 250 rupees, everything. Whether I watch it or not, cable never bothered. If you go to any MSO and saying, how many people watch Star Plus in your network, they will be looking at you and saying, which world do you live in? I don't care, right? Today, the world is different, right? Churn has become a major concern for all traditional players. Churn is a concern for OTT. Churn is a concern for an OTT aggregator, right? So my question is related to what is the difference that as an OTT, if you are running my own, I am your customer, you need to retain me at the time of renewal. Same is the problem for an OTT. How is it different? Because for me, if I am subscribed to an OTT aggregator, I am now questioning how many apps did I see. You charge me 1,999, gave me 20 apps. But boss, I only saw four, like you said, right? To your point, Amir, where you said out of 10 tiles, three were clicked, only one was watched, right? At the time of renewal, as a consumer, I'm thinking, what did I do? Similarly for an OTT player, right? Whether when I subscribed annual, quarterly, monthly, whatever, did I justify that price? So how is it different between an OTT player and an OTT aggregation? Because churn is a big concern. So I, I'll just uh, add this to this is that, uh, so if you see whatever subscriptions irrespective of what OTT aggregator is charging or irrespective of what OTT platform directly charging. Nobody is able to make money. So the question of uh, not watching that particular content so that you don't charge, that is <laughs> out of question. I think 90% of people we will sit here and ask MGs. So I think uh, we are anyway paying almost 40% uh, uh, higher from what they are charging to the end consumer. So because of the MGs, because not everybody is able to meet the MG. That is the biggest concern in the whole aggregation space. That is why there are three, four now. But if the MG part would have been removed... You need a TRA in your life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, anybody who can solve this for us. <laughs> so, so I think uh, that is the biggest concern for... So because the OTT aggregator is not just uh, helping you to get a new subscriber, but he is working. So for example, uh, B2C model for an OTT aggregator it is, uh, it will not make sense, at least for next three years. So Playbox is highly focused on the B2B market. Uh, operators, which are the internet operators who are the existing cable operators, we are today reaching to 50,000 operators across India. And these are the guys who are bundling this. That is the only way we will, we are able to survive ourselves. So 
ఇంటర్నెట్లీ people probably they'll ask less mgs next year <laughs> uh, i think that that is not going to happen for soon <laughs> because everybody is trying to make extra work out of it uh, but the churn so in b2b to c the churn is slightly lesser than what is in b2c because in b2c it is purely content based if i want to watch a particular content i will subscribe and pay 1000 bucks also but i will never come again till the time certain content but in b2b it uh, has its bundled so yatin will answer this probably because he is the one of a player like us pay, who are bundling to the end consumer matlab irrespective of end consumer is not paying for that so the churn over there is less again churn can only be prevent on the basis of uh, there are multiple factors the if what if the broadband service is not working fine he can churn for the ott also so uh, it is very uh, difficult to answer that point today let me take a stab uh, very good question so i uh, my perspective is at the core of churn and that's the question that you asked uh, is content <coughs> right and engagement uh, so if for a moment uh, the consumer was on my own platform uh, one is of course uh, i have compelling content i need to have compelling content to i need to keep reminding people and push that content and i need to engage with them in some way or the other right uh, we need to do the same according to me if we don't do these the viewer is going to churn out in any case because she's going to believe that you know i don't use this app or i don't think the content is good i watched one movie or some show 8 10 months back but you know i've not found anything meaningful to me the logic is the same even if it's an aggregator and therefore i see an opportunity if we want to reduce churn how can the ott platform and the aggregator collaborate with each other to understand those consumers uh, you know share insights and that's what at aha that's what we do uh, with the aggregators whom we are working and we are trying to work in a collaborative mode where we are sharing insights uh, we are giving them a heads up on what compelling content we have so that they can in turn throw it to the consumer and and i believe that at the end of that period when it time comes to churn uh, you'll hopefully retain them if you if the aggregator does more or less what the uh, platform is doing i feel i feel it's a responsibility of an aggregator ott provider content creator and the last mile operator also who is providing the services in a bundled manner then only we can uh, prevent churn as a collaborative way is the only for way forward yeah just to add here um, you know india is also a very price sensitive market so um, you know wherever between the aggregators i feel whoever is giving cheaper and the most ott apps i think people's loyalty is going to change there so though we uh, i uh, though people and there are also two ways to it that sometimes uh, they have not experienced the app or they do not download the app but when it is available for pre- free people start watching the app so an engagement and loyalty starts uh, developing there but of course it's a larger question and on why churns happen independently and why people choose uh, Uh, other partners as well uh, but i think largely um, you know offers promotions help uh, you know address the chones in uh, in certain ways and uh, engagement with the consumer and service with the consumer also helps to a certain extent where people do not want to just change uh, you know because they are happy with the app or they are happy with the ui or they are happy with the content so that's also certain factors to it so currently for us the churn is going great because the, the because dangal tv has very strong tv shows so tv shows if you compare to web series are going year round right like if there's a show it has 300 episodes it is already a branded show unlike web series you need to brand web series and episodes are coming out every day and if they want to watch before tv they need to go on dangal play and people are like addicted to these shows uh, so like for tv shows the churn gets better than web series in general so actually uh, amit you said it and i that's what is see everybody here right we are very excited with the size of the market right that restaurant example at 
actually if you look at it is probably you are in 5 and 95 is still <laughs> yeah, right? exactly right so if i look at internet users so many smartphones um, so much potential of what morning somebody said right 100 million still to be i don't believe in it but whatever the the thing is that there is a large market right whether it's for ott or it's for linear but somehow everyone is struggling like you said nobody is making money people are what is it that is is how do you reach the larger audience and this is a question for an ott aggregator a cable company which wants to and ott right why is it that is it pricing is a problem is it the numbers people are very satisfied with what they are watching their mobile phones or their tvs that they don't want to spend money i have enough time to kill uh, what is it that you know one of the greatest interviews that i have seen uh, and i have quoted this before it's a uh, uh, reed hastings who's netflix chairman when somebody asked him who's your competitor he said sleep right so that was the level of saying that i don't people should consume more now here we have probably on an average one and a half mobiles in this room for everybody's hand still we are all struggling right what is it is it pricing is it content but i don't think so we're producing so much content what is it that people are not willing to spend or subscribe and will this is open to everybody so uh, willingness to spend and i don't think it's pricing so much it's just, you know even if you have a 99 rupee pack for example it's to do with the indian consumer uh, right and perhaps to add flavor to this over the last 6 7 weeks we've been actively engaging with consumers in andhra and telangana and uh, so there are a lot of people who go out they watch movies they're movie junkies uh, and they watch a lot of shows what an average family of four will spend how much in hyderabad or in vijayawada oh watch uh, a movie uh, to watch a movie luckily there a ticket would be about in a vijayawada would be 100 150 rupees but so still 600 rupees 600 rupees for 3 hours uh, but interestingly uh, when it comes to watching shows they're clearly watching content on o off ott but not on ott so while some of them are doing password sharing and the likes youngsters unfortunately there are a lot of pirated uh, this piracy there so if a movie releases today in 48 hours you have a pretty good print uh, you know out there and the irony is this particular guy the, the moment you log in he says beware of fake uh, sites of his own and he's pirated uh, so I, I think it's just a thrill or a habit that i don't want to pay when i can get it free content is becoming expensive right and uh, willingness to pay remains the same so as and when you want to make you know more large screen content on a web web series format it is becoming more costlier uh, plus the marketing costs are reaching high so while we make about 1.3 billion uh, dollars today uh, the content cost put together all other cost is around 1.5 to 2 billion so I think that's where, uh, you know, the, uh, the pricing is a very sensitive uh, factor in India. And uh, that's where people are still not uh, got into a habit of paying more to watch, you know, a more uh, premium content. Slowly, steadily, it's building, but it's going to take time. Uh, premium is here to stay, is what I believe. Uh, and uh, AVOD is also struggling in a way. So I feel uh, pricing has always been a sensitive. and more the choices every consumer has now more than 30 40 ott apps itself to watch content and plus we are also uh, as you said that sleep is something which we are competing but i also feel social media is also something that we are competing with like insta reels and facebook reels are also time consuming and screen time or uh, taking screen time of the people so i think that's uh, where the even competition lies uh, th uh, these days I feel it's an intent. The problem is intent. The consumer is ready to pay because consumer loves watching content. India, uh, in India, Bollywood is religion, and uh, so, uh, so I feel the, the it is never the concern of the price. I think the right model is missing. The whole industry, as OTT industry, is not taken seriously. Non from the uh, linear guys, 
and not from the uh, consumer side because it is always that, as he said, that piracy is something which is very common and very normal. Even my father sometimes watch content and I don't even come to know that he's watching from a piracy website. And it is very easily available to these guys. I think the awareness needs to be created from the broadcaster, from the aggregators and from the distribution side of the model. So then only this will rightly fit into a model where, because if you make it available at right price in a legal model, consumer will pay for it. But nobody has an intent to market that much. Some are the concerns, some are the concerns of money. There's nobody, uh, there is no margin for the aggregator so much which he can share with the cable operator or a linear player. So all this will come in place over the period of time. So intent which needs to build to come together and solve this. I think that is missing. Well, <clears throat> While uh, Ravi and uh, uh, Amir and everyone has talked about pricing, I think maybe we should also look at it slightly differently. The consumer wants to watch content and he wants to watch a variety of content. Like you said earlier, there, is, there are n number of applications available. There are thousands and hundreds and thousands of hours of content available. As an aggregator, probably what we should be looking at is how we show that content to the consumer, easy to access, and from one place, how the consumer can access a range of content. Pricing will come into play. Maybe we can look at a different model. If there is 100,000 hours of content available on an aggregator, and if a consumer watches one hour, maybe you should pay for one hour, instead of doing an MG for the entire month for an application. I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a possibility. But finally, the consumer, like Amir said, consumer may be willing to pay, but he wants to see all the content that he may want, uh, that he may like to be visible in one place. He doesn't want to go from app to app to find content to watch. If I am an action buff, I don't want to go to Amazon Prime and Hotstar and Sony Live and Z5 and Netflix and look for content. If, it, if all of that content is available on one application in front of me, I should be able to see it from there. I think that will probably help. And of course, the uh, bundling with other services is something that uh, will help. I think so the most important part about getting wider audience is like releasing new content every month. The higher the frequency of releasing new content, the more cohorts type of audience you can get to your platform, right? And the right combination of marketing and with bundling partners, that way I think so we can make people pay also and like, yeah, if they get to see a new content coming up every week or something, they'll for sure subscribe to the platform. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Our time is up and people are hungry. So we'll let <laughs> them go and have lunch. Uh, thank you, everybody, for spending. Thank you, Indian Television, for giving us this opportunity to have this chat. Thank you. Thank you so much, all of you. And uh, thanks for taking that such a beautiful session. And I was so engrossed in the session in the starting when you asked that, how many hours do you all spend? I was like, both my hands up. I spend nine hours on my phone. So yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, I'm always being honest. That's the best part. Well, may I please request all of you to give a thunderous round of applause to all our panelists for the day. Thank you so much. Otherwise, I was bored with storytelling. Now, we'll start the felicitation process, uh, requesting our session chair to kindly start the process of felicitation uh, with Mr. Ravi Kant Sabnavis. Uh, I would request all of you to continue with the applaud till the time we are felicitating all our guests on the stage. Thank you so much, Mr. Sabnavis, for joining us for the day. Now, we'll move forward. Uh, to felicitate the beautiful lady out there, Archita Jasani, COO of Vihan Digital Media, OTT Chana Jor. Thank you so much, Archita, for joining us today. And thanks for sharing your expertise with all of us. After this, we'll move on to felicitate Mr. Yatin Gupta, Senior Vice President, GTPL, Hathway Limited. Thank you, Mr. Gupta, for coming here and sharing your knowledge with us. We are so glad to have you here for the day. After this, we'll move on to felicitate Mr. Akshat Singhal, Head Dangal Play. Thank you, Mr. Singhal, for being with us today and sharing all the insights for the session. Now we'll move on to felicitate Mr. Amir Mulani, founder and CEO of Playbox TV. Thank you so much, Mr. Mulani, for coming and joining us today. And with this, would like to take the honor to uh, felicitate our session chair, of course, Mr. Anuj Gandhi.